Hello and welcome to another installment of United Way's Community Impact Series, Advancing the Common Good. I'm your host, Connor Coots. Today we are so lucky to be joined by Jacob Kuntz, who is a very robust member of our philanthropic community and the executive director of Habitat for Humanity. Jacob, welcome. Well, thanks for having me. What is the Habitat model, if, if you can tell us, kind of what's the, what's the situation with how you guys uh, drive your model? Oh, how does Habitat work? Um, well, we're across the country in 50, uh, 50 states. We're in 64 countries mm -hmm. around the world. Um, one of about seven organizations in the state of Montana. And we provide a hand up model of home ownership. Uh, so working with volunteers, we help to give um, citizens in the community who uh, families who have low income, who would normally not be able to afford a home, um, the opportunity to own a home. Uh, and that's only through the support of volunteers and our sponsors. So it's a home ownership model for people with low income, providing affordable housing. We also um, have home preservation programs helping existing homeowners uh, do vital repairs to their homes mm -hmm. to make sure that they can remain in their homes. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's beautiful and good work. Well, Jacob, you're a guy who likes to work with your hands. So please tell me about the current house you're building and kind of... Uh, how you're making it affordable and how you're making it energy efficient. All right, um, that's a great question. Um, we're building our next home on the corner of Custer and Benton Avenue. It's right next to the golf course. It is a, uh, it's a super insulated home for a, a, a family, um, a woman by the name of Kelly Moody. She works with the Rocky Mountain Development Council in their Head Start program. She's a teacher and she has a son um, who's named Sebastian mm -hmm. and he's nine years old. And it's a, uh, it's a perfect fit for the family. Um, our, our hope is always to provide not only affordable housing, but to make the home um, as efficient as possible so they can afford to maintain the home and to afford the utilities for the home. So the home is actually built with some of the best technology now that's, that's available to affordable housing. Uh, it's being uh, built with SIPS panel walls, which are uh, structurally insulated panels, mm -hmm. about 10 inches thick, solid foam. Uh, with uh, super insulation all the way around, insulation under the slab uh, and everywhere. And so uh, the bills for those homes should run somewhere between $35 to $50 a month. They're all electric. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a fantastic opportunity. It's built completely vol by volunteers. Um, it's probably, it's as well built, if not better built than most homes that are being constructed now in Helena. And we're doing it all with volunteers, which is, is pretty exciting. So, yeah. That is very exciting. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Now we know for when working with nonprofit uh, agencies, sometimes you have to bounce back from some challenging things. And you had a kind of an unfortunate situation where there was a fire yeah. at the restore. Can you tell me how you kind of recovered from that and what that situation looked like? Well, we're uh, still in the process of recovering. Actually, uh, the uh, the fire was last July, July sixteenth. We're actually going to be reopening the ReStore next week on May 18th, uh, and it's a, uh, it's a wonderful time. We, we had to completely remodel the building. We almost lost the entire building. If it wasn't for the fire crews and the work that they did, it would have uh, burned all the way to the ground. Mm -hmm. um, it was an arson fire, a, a random arson uh, attack mm -hmm. by an individual who had been setting uh, fires throughout the, the valley, mm -hmm. and uh, no idea why he, he chose us. I think he just found a vulnerable spot of the bu building and broke mm -hmm. in. And, you know, we've, in a situation like that, you can either look at it as a disaster um, and, or you can see it as an opportunity. And I think that in the midst of the struggles with it, there was actually a tremendous opportunity for us to um, reform the organization, re-examine our processes. Our goal in uh, Helena is to build affordable housing and uh, the fire has actually given us an opportunity to build our capacity to, to challenge the systems that we have and to improve the system so that we can um, get ourselves into a, uh, a place where we can build more homes for families because there's a lot of needy families who need uh, who need the housing and the kind of service that Habitat provides. So. Yeah, good deal. And for yeah. our viewers who uh, don't know, what is the ReStore? Uh, the ReStore is uh, uh, the way that Habitat helps to uh, raise funds for building affordable housing. We uh, take reclaimed materials that people take out of their homes during uh, remodel projects and we, we resell them. So it's a bit of a reclaimed material store. We take appliances, we mm -hmm. take old cabinets, we take furniture, um, old lumber, anything that, uh, that is of value that someone else can use on their home. 
we, we take that into the store. And so it's a bit of a, a reclaimed hardware store in many mm -hmm. ways. So. Oh, so good deal. And you're clearly doing a very uh, fabulous and meaningful work currently. Uh, where are you going? I mean, what are some kind of uh, things in the future that you're looking to do? That's a great question. Um, well, uh, we started in 1992. Mm -hmm. We've currently constructed 31 homes in the Helena area. Mm -hmm. And so if you work out the numbers of that, it's about a home, a home and a half on pace every year. Right now, there are over 400 families that are on the wait list for the Helena Housing Authority waiting for uh, a spot in for affordable housing. There's uh, another 400 families that are waiting for housing assistance. So we can't build enough homes. So our goal here is the next few years to start building more homes and to start helping uh, homeowners with this new program around home preservation. So the one to one and a half homes a year, we're hoping to turn into three or four mm -hmm. uh, a year um, within the next few years, mm -hmm. uh, as well as helping uh, families to do vital repairs to their homes. So. Uh, roofs, we have a lot of people who are living in their homes who just can't afford to replace their roofs. I get calls all the time, especially in the winter, obviously, with people who uh, have a heating system that's mm -hmm. gone out, they can't afford to replace a boiler or a furnace. Uh, families that um, are elder population where they are being forced with uh, being turned out of their homes to go to a, a, a residential care facility because their homes are not uh, wheelchair accessible. So installing grab bars, walk-in showers, wheelchair ramps, those are things that Habitat can be involved with. And we're starting to, to engage our partners in the area and to, uh, to look at uh, the possibilities going forward. So more new homes, mm -hmm. more home preservation, repairing homes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Habitat's going to have, a, it's a real challenge here in the next few years, mm -hmm. but I think we can do it. And we know... The residents of Lewis and Clark area are very prudent in their volunteerism. How mm. might somebody a volunteer, perhaps financially or physically, on a project with yeah. the Habitat for Humanity? Well, we're always looking for volunteers. And right now we have projects scheduled uh, through the summer, and we're looking for volunteers, both individuals and groups. Mm. People can volunteer at the ReStore. We are mm. always in need of help um, at the ReStore, uh, working with the general public, working with the, uh, the people who come into the, to the ReStore. Um, we have a uh, definite need for help on our, our uh, homes, so people who have some skills, who um, have carpentry experience, even no carpentry experience, people who are just interested in coming out and joining us. Uh, we work with everybody, whether they've ever picked up a hammer or whether they're a master carpenter, it doesn't matter. We've got all kinds of people, and, and a Habitat build site is really a place of um, mentorship. It's a place where people can learn about building, learn about different processes, and I've actually had volunteers who worked with us before who have taken what they've learned from a Habitat build and have gone on to build their own home mm -hmm. or remodel their homes. So um, absolutely we have a need for volunteers. That's how we, this program works. We're not able to do it without the volunteers, um, without the financial support of the community, um, without the, uh, the physical and the, and the labor support of the community. It wouldn't happen. So mm -hmm. absolutely we could use it. People can uh, get on our website, www.helenahabitat.org. And there's a place there where folks can sign up to volunteer or learn more about the program, learn more about projects, or uh, just email us with their, their questions, okay. thoughts. Well, there you have it, folks. Habitat for Humanity, a very happening and impactful organization. Jacob, thank you kindly for joining me today. Thank you. Well, that does it for us. Please join us next time on another installment of United Way's Community Impact Series, Advancing the Common Good. Thank you.